हा सर नागेश कराड़े सर जॉइन बता नहीं करा हाँ करते हाँ नागेश कराड़े सर uh getting some audio problem i think you can play rotary clip as well kya sir audio audio yet nahi hai ha sir karu lagla hai change kare la yes yes
इट्स वेरी गुड पहले चीज वीडियो दाखू गया स्टार्टिंग चीज होती ना अजू एक दोन मिनट से सुरुआत करू मेम्बर्स आती जॉइनिंग वन बाय वन तो फर्स्ट वीडियो जो होता ना तो रिपीट करा देर आर हंड्रेड पार्टिसिपेंट टूडे सो दे हाव मेड से सेंचुरी टूडे गुड रोटरी क्लब ऑफ सोलापुर एमआरटीसी एंड सारथी संडे इंग्लिश स्पीकर्स क्लब I jointly organized today's this session. That is the 23rd April World English Language Day. On this uh, auspicious occasion, we have got a special guest today, Honorable Professor Dr. Manoj Doshi Sir. Before starting the main session, within two minutes, we are going to play the Sarthi's video. Gordon, will you please? Thereafter, immediately the session will be started. Thank you. Gordon can you manage Ha ka sir a uh, first video hota na to sarthi ja Ha sir ek minute ke saath hi kar diya And uh, today we have got uh, the galaxy of bigger theories so here Maitri sir Welcome. Ready, sir. He is directly from, very directly from Chennai. Ready, sir. He is from Elsai. He is the national Elsai vice president. Ready, sir. Welcome to the session. Elsai is an organization of English language teachers from the North India. And ready, sir. Okay. Thank you. These were the two videos. First, we should have a big round of applause for all these uh, activities which have been presented by. Our technical director, Dr. Govardhan Chavan. Thank you, Govardhan ji, for excellent videos. Now let's move to our main session today. As you know, friends, today, Rotary Club Solapur MIDC and the Sarthi Sunday English Speakers uh, Speakers Club have jointly organized today's session. And of course, it is 23rd Dospil Day, known as the English Language Day, World English Language Day, the birth and the date anniversary, the great playwright, poet. and world famous dramatist william shakespeare so for this the chief guest of this today's session is professor dr manoj doshi sir doshi sir welcome to the session and we should have a big round of applause to doshi sir today he is going to deliver a lecture on william shakespeare and the english language so without wasting time i would like to hand over the charge to sishal musude introduce today chief guest manoj doshi sir over to sishan unmute yourself mike unmute sishan unmute yourself okay right yes is trishal masood the sarthian and today is very small and i have a part of the great problem excuse me
will you restart now okay ah uh, fine today is a very special and historical day in history of english language as today is a birth and death anniversary of great dramatist william shakespeare i am here to introduce today's speaker and chief guest dr manohar joshi sir actually there is no any need of any identification or introduction of joshi sir he is already popular and well known to all of us but still we need to enlighten his light book with our capacity in brief dr manohar purushottam joshi who has done ma ba third and also a phd holder he is associated with walking college of arts and science solapur as a professor and head department of english language and vice principal of arts section he is also trilingual poet translator and writer he is a complete oyster of the english language for the last 21 years while talking about his academic achievements he has completed a ugc sponsored minor research project on study of interpretation of gandhism in the select project country by gandhi gandhi You got some voice problem, teacher. Oh. Hello. Uh, Sichel, we are not audible. Sichel, yeah, you are not audible. Okay. Next by S R T M University, Nan did on exploration of self, a comparative culture study of the select. Now you talk, sir. Sichel, turn off the turn off the video and hello. Sichel, Sichel, wait, wait. Turn off your video. Are you talking now, sir? No, turn off your video. Yes, sir. Unmute your mic. Turn off your video. Off your video. Off your video. It is some range problem over there. Yeah. Continue. Uh, Sisha is getting some brain problem. I think there will be difficulty we are facing. Sisha, unmute yourself. Your mic is muted. Unmute it. Hello, Sichel. Am I audible? Hello, Sichel. Am I audible? Sichel, am I audible? Hello. Ah, uh, better way you stop over there. 
will continue so one other thing is oh, okay meanwhile meanwhile let me introduce today's guest professor dr manoj doshi sir i do know friends he is the person of oh, he is wonderful knowledge, knowledge excellent communicator a good orator and a good writer as well and uh, presently he is working as the professor in the department of arts and science what is the arts and science and he is also handling the responsibility of vice presidentship uh, vice principal sir over there so during his 21 and 22 years career he has achieved many awards and recognition in his life and uh, two years back sathi was been delighted to honor him with the best english teacher award in the year 2019 so he might be also the recording all that one and uh, today i am happy the recipient manoj doshi sir and the award by given by lt director at the time shri sarasabuddha sir he is also present over here huh? lt is from pune english language teaching institute of symbiosis so both are present over here welcome shri sir and uh, without wasting time i request manoj doshi sir to take the charge and deliver a lecture the subject is of course william shakespeare and the english language or to doshi sir we should have a big round of applause for him doshi sir over to you thank you thanks a lot and uh, at the very outset i would like to express my gratitude towards rotary club of am i audible to all of you i would like to know am i audible yeah. to all of you yeah 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 sir okay it's very wonderful uh, and uh, i have been uh, watching the videos of uh, rotary club of solapur in my dc uh, along with the video clip that was played uh, by sarthi sunday english speakers club of solapur very wonderful organizations that uh, the city of solapur has we are really proud of uh, you people who have been working in the interest of the people over here uh, sharpening and uh, honing the social sen sensibilities and uh, the linguistic uh, acquisition for that matter at the very outset i would like to uh, wish all of you uh, very happy world english day at the very outset of my speech uh, i know that uh, in the audiences we have what a number of followers uh, yeah big people are there i know uh, professor uh, reddy uh, professor sarsra good day and the professor meetri is also there i can see the names of uh, the participants here and i'm really yeah. awestruck by the presence of all these dignitaries over here i can also see the members of uh, rotary club of solapur i can see the members of uh, sarthi sunday english speakers club of solapur as well and it's a matter of great delight for me uh, to get uh, uh, associated with these two organizations these two uh, platforms who have been working dedicatedly uh, for so many years now uh, i remember to have delivered a speech for uh, sarthi sunday english speakers club uh, way back in uh, 2004 uh, or 5 unless i'm wrong and uh, the second time that i got associated with this club was uh, when i was involved in the uh, the best teacher uh, award and now we have an interaction here on the occasion of uh, uh, william shakespeare's birth anniversary and it's a matter of great coincidence that it happens to be uh, the death anniversary of this uh, uh, immortal writer well uh, as i have been given a topic a subject uh, so let me restrict myself to the topic that i have been given uh, for uh, tonight's uh, interaction on two people Uh, it is uh, william shakespeare and uh, english language i have been told by the organizers of uh, this event that uh, i can mix my uh, english uh, and marathi uh, as uh, we know that solapur happens to be a multilingual place half a dozen languages are uh, used in solapur and uh, so i have been advised by uh, mr vanga that uh, i should use uh, marathi intermittently but let me uh, try to speak english uh, to a larger extent because i happen to be uh, a teacher of english 
and I have been uh, teaching English literature and language for the last uh, 25 odd years. And uh, I'm, I don't see that uh, I'm an infallible uh, uh, specialist as far as Shakespeare is concerned. Uh, but uh, whatever I have been able to combine and cull throughout these 25 years, uh, I'd like to accommodate all those uh, data into my presentation. My presentation is not going to be, uh, we call it a pure academician's presentation. I'm a lover of Shakespeare. Uh, therefore, uh, you may simply enjoy this presentation because uh, it's going to be a mixed bag. Uh, so without wasting time, because we have already uh, invested, I would not say uh, wasted a lot of time because this is typical Indian uh, convention to be burn a lot of uh, oil for the introduction and the preface of the uh, ceremonies that we normally perform. And it happens that uh, the person who has been invited uh, for a particular presentation gets uh, of the timing that is uh, allocated for uh, the event. Okay, without wasting time, I'd like to present you the tiny history uh, that I have prepared. I have got a few slides to uh, because William Shakespeare uh, is almost like an ocean. Because, uh, and uh, I know that I'm a very bad swimmer, uh, but uh, I have got a bucket full of water uh, from this ocean called William John Shakespeare. And uh, I hope that uh, I will be able to satisfy uh, the participants. I can see a huge number of participants, almost 80 uh, participants are there. So without wasting time, I would like to present to you uh, the PPT that I have prepared for this uh, particular event. Okay, in a minute, I will uh, be presenting to you my screen. Okay, can you see the screen? Is it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, you can see the topic for today's uh, presentation happens to be William Shakespeare and English language. Uh, and this is 23rd of April. Uh, very special day as far as English uh, uh, lovers are concerned. The teachers and students of English language and literature uh, rejoice on this occasion. Uh, we celebrated all over the world as a uh, World English Day or Global English Day for that matter. Uh, we know that uh, William Shakespeare uh, has been given a number of names, right? Uh, right from his uh, detractors uh, up to the fans. We have, uh, uh, you can see, uh, a huge number of uh, attributes uh, given to William Shakespeare. And one of uh, these attributes happens to be uh, Swan of Avon. William Shakespeare has been called Swan of Avon. And we will shortly see how he was criticized in the beginning of his career uh, as uh, a member of a dramatic uh, club or dramatic organization uh, in London. And from that particular criticism, William Shakespeare went on to become Swan of Avon. The correct pronunciation of this word is Swan rather than Swan. So, we have to mark the pronunciations as well because uh, I have been taught by uh, a very uh, proficient group of people. I might say this for sure. I don't know whether my students uh, may say this of me or not. Okay, we go to the next slide. You can see the outline of uh, my presentation. I plan my presentation in a systematic manner. I try my level best uh, to see that uh, all those who participate in an event uh, I am presenting uh, uh, at are satisfied. So the outline of my presentation, uh, uh, you can say sections of my presentation. Uh, I will begin with a brief uh, biography of William Shakespeare. Then I will go to Shakespeare's contribution to English language. Language. There have been a number of contributors, but William Shakespeare's uh, contribution is quite immortal. And then uh, I will go to another section in my presentation, that is Poems of Shakespeare. Now, Poems of uh, Shakespeare happens to be a very ambiguous uh, phrase because uh, it may mean poems composed by William Shakespeare to some extent, and the poems written on William Shakespeare to a great extent. 
and after that there will be a tiny slide to end uh, my presentation it is self realization and uh, shakespeare so this is the outline of my uh, presentation tonight you can see william shakespeare biography is known to one and all you know. people can uh, you know say this uh, you call it uh, at midnight also you can wake a person who loves shakespeare from the bottom of his heart uh, at midnight and ask him uh, the life and books of william shakespeare you know or the biography of william shakespeare uh, he can recite uh, a to z of william shakespeare's biography uh, in a jiffy uh, but uh, as it is a matter of formality some of uh, the participants in the audience do not have a full understanding of the biography of william shakespeare it will not be a bad idea to spend some time uh, on this particular area as well stratford upon avon happens to be the place where william shakespeare was born and uh, it falls in warwickshire county uh, in england you know they have got counties just as in india we have got states and it was 23rd of april 1564 that william shakespeare was born now the birth of william shakespeare uh for that matter has been very uh let's call it uh, debatable uh, issue but uh, as far as the records of the holy trinity church of stratford upon uh evan are concerned we can see the baptism which happens to be the naming ceremony in christian religion uh took place on 26th of april uh it means normally the baptism takes place at uh, on the third day uh, or the fourth day uh, from the birth of a christian uh, child so Shakespeare was given a Christian name. He was called William on twenty sixth of April. So it is guessed, it is inferred, uh, and the hypothesis is that he must have been born uh, on twenty third of uh, April, fifteen hundred sixty four. For that matter, T. S. Eliot says that April uh, is a cruelest month, but <laughs> I think April happens to be a very pious and very sacred month because uh, this happens to be the uh, month in which William Shakespeare was born. Uh, way back in 1564 and there you can see the parents of william shakespeare john and uh, mary uh, shakespeare and we know a lot about uh, these two persons and uh, his wife was anne hathaway uh, who happened to be 8 years senior to william shakespeare you can see marrying somebody uh, especially for uh, uh, bride groom you know having a bride senior to him is always uh, a very uh, you call it a vision for that matter because you can see the parallel of william shakespeare in sachin tendulkar whose wife <laughs> happens to be uh, elder than uh, sachin is so you can see anna hathaway was 8 years senior to william shakespeare and uh, we see the marriage of these two persons taking place when william was only 18 years of age he was a teenager and he got married and uh, it was a fruitful productive marriage for that matter they had three issues susan Judith and Hamlet happened to be the twins, and we know that William Shakespeare came across a number of ups and downs in his life. Uh, if you remember, uh, a very famous, uh, you call it business tycoon of India, business person, or you can call him an industrialist uh, of India, Ratan Tata once said that life must have ups and downs, uh, and he compares uh, the graph of life which has ups and downs with ECG. uh electrocardiograph just imagine what happens if your ecg yes shows only a horizontal line there are no ups and downs what is the indication that the person is dead and gone so you can see life must have ups and downs and you learn a lot from uh, uh, the ups and downs that you have in your life and william shakespeare also had a number of ups and downs in his life and uh, he was a better student of uh, the school of the world my dear friends there are two types of education that we have no? we have a formal education and we have an informal education as well so we are in the beginning of our life you know are uh, the students of uh, the world of school but once we complete our formal education we enter into the school of the world my dear friends and we are students there forever now you can see what happened uh, every you know great man's life has got a few uh bad patches for that matter and if you look at william shakespeare's uh, early life uh, you come to know uh, that uh, there are so many stories generated a number of fabricated stories and tales have been generated uh, regarding the way in which william shakespeare happened to leave stratford upon avon 
right? And uh, go to London. So you can see uh, a very famous and uh, for that matter, a very notorious, uh, uh, you call it uh, tale uh, has been generated regarding uh, uh, the deer hunting, uh, uh, you call it act by William Shakespeare. And uh, he was wanted in uh, Stratford upon Avon, and that's the reason why he ran away from Stratford. I can see uh, there is a very wonderful uh, writer called uh, uh, Virginia Woolf, for that matter, you know, who imagined uh, the sister of William Shakespeare. You know, that's a very different issue altogether. It can be, uh, you know, a topic for a separate presentation for that matter, because uh, Virginia Woolf happened to imagine, you know. Uh, if at all William Shakespeare had a sister, and if at all she had run away from Stratford upon Avon, uh, would she be able to uh, become as famous as William became eventually? Now, this is a million dollar question that uh, uh, Virginia Woolf raised. But you can see, as far as William Shakespeare is concerned, let us not get deviated. This is the habit of a number of teachers getting deviated, right? But I know that uh, there is real joy uh, in deviations, right, as well. So you can see how he ran away. It is believed or uh, not believed. He's a fab fabricated tale that he ran away from Stratford upon uh, Avon. He went to London. And you can see the first reference to uh, William Shakespeare in London uh, was uh, given out by one of the university wits. You know, there were a number of uh, established writers before William Shakespeare went onto the scene, the literary scene of London for that matter. There were a number of writers who uh, were well qualified, highly uh, edified for that matter, gifted writers, you know, and uh, they were polyglots as well. You know, they knew different languages of the European continent for that matter. And we see the first reference being made to William Shakespeare that too, in a very, you call it uh, offensive and damaging manner, he was called an upstart crew uh, by one of the contemporary dramatists, one of the contemporary writers called Robert Greene. And thus the world London uh, without uh, any acquaintances, without any relatives for that matter in London. He was uh, you can see uh, eventually uh, William Shakespeare found his right track and uh, he got introduced to a dramatic company which eventually must have motivated him into you know thinking about a writing career my dear friends and that is the way in which William Shakespeare you know started to go up the social ladder in London so if you look at the journey of William Shakespeare from an ordinary man coming from a village called Stratford upon Avon. Stratford, located on the banks of the Avon River, for that matter, it was a small place. It was a village. And he was almost like a villager. And you can see with meager education, he was not able to complete his primary education. You know, people have a number of stories regarding the qualification of education of William Shakespeare. You know, But you can see the same man who was not fully educated. He was was partially educated for that matter, has been allowing you know, a lot of scope for that matter for all the so-called educated people, the so-called edified people for that matter. So you can see William Shakespeare, the villager, and William Shakespeare, you know, the Londoner. You can see the journey, and this journey was quite difficult. Just as T.S. Eliot says that uh, you know, his journey from America to England that was full of difficulties, full of hurdles for that matter. In the same manner, William Shakespeare, when he went to London, you know, he was a non-entity. So he used to hold horses of the theater goers. Now, this was a very miserable condition, a pitiable condition. He was all alone. He was high and dry for that matter. But he knew you know, that he had to carve his own destiny, my dear friends. You know? And that is the reason why you can see in his plays how destiny plays a very important role. So if you look at the journey, if you condense the journey of William Shakespeare, you can say he started from an identity of an upstart crew and he went on to become the swan of heaven. Now this is you know, a small scale, you can call it a miniature 
you know, biography of William Shakespeare, my dear friends. Okay. Now you can see early struggle and success of uh, William Shakespeare. You know, we know that uh, he started from the lowest rung of uh, uh, the, yes, London society. And he went up, he became a member of a uh, large chamber man, which was called the King's Man for that matter, just as we have got a few uh, dramatic organizations, you know, dramatic outfits in Solapur, right? For that matter. In the same manner, you know, there used to be a number of dramatic organizations, dramatic clubs. And these clubs would be sponsored by the aristocrats of London. Sometimes, you know, the Queen would sponsor, you know, these uh, people who would uh, enact plays. And then you can see how he became a writer. And if you look at the writing career of William Shakespeare, that got underway uh, in the year approximately, we are not certain about the dates for that matter, as far as years and dates are concerned, you know, and you're talking about a man who lived, who was born in the last quarter, for that matter, of, of uh, and uh, who passed away, you know, in the first quarter, for that matter, of the 17th century. So you can see, we don't have a reliable evidence regarding the years and dates uh, of William Shakespeare's, you know, uh, creations, literary compositions for that matter. You can see uh, he became a part of the production company as well, uh, became a producer as well. Just imagine William Shakespeare, it is said, uh, used to act as an actor in the plays written by other dramatists. As I told you, uh, there were a number of contemporary writers. Uh, most of them were qualified writers for that matter. And these writers you know, gave very tough times to William Shakespeare. He acted in the plays written by other writers. On one fine Sunday morning, he might have thought, how long was he going to act in the plays written by any Tom before Harry? Why should not he start writing plays on his own? And then you can see how William Shakespeare must have been motivated and inspired writing down plays on his own. And then he had an actor in the company called Richard Burbage, uh, who happened to be a very successful uh, actor. And uh, he was a part and parcel of uh, the Lord Chamberlain's men and the Globe Theatre for that matter, uh, where most of the plays written by the next year uh, got enacted, uh, played a very important role, an instrumental role uh, in the success of uh, William Shakespeare. You can see, you can see as a writer, if you look at William Shakespeare, William Shakespeare you know, wrote narrative poem, therefore he was uh, known as a poet, and he is celebrated as a poet all over the world. And if you look at uh, the number of sonnets written by William Shakespeare, it is 154 sonnets. And we know that sonnets were brought to England, brought to London, you know, uh, from Italy, my dear friend. The clock happened to be the father of uh, uh, sonnets. He was the original sonneteer. And William Shakespeare you know, gave his own version of sonnets, which is supposed to be Shakespearean, sonnet, which is different from the other varieties of uh, sonnets written by other sonneteers. So, do William Shakespeare wrote 37 plays. Some people say that 37 and a half plays for that matter that William Shakespeare uh, eventually wrote down. But unfortunately, uh, it's a fact, you know, and it's a very uh, teasing fact that William Shakespeare was not able to publish a single play during his lifetime. All the plays of William Shakespeare were posthumously published. They were published after his death uh, in the year 1616. And you can see the first volume, uh, which is supposed to be the collection of uh, Shakespearean plays, uh, was released, was published in the year 1623 by his actor friends who had been very much loyal and sincere towards uh, late William Shakespeare. John Hemming and Henry Condon happened to publish uh, all the plays written by William Shakespeare in the year 1623. Now you can see, as I have been telling you that William Shakespeare was not lucky in his education. He was not a fully educated person. You know? There is some disturbance. I'm getting some disturbance. Somebody has uh, switched on the mic, it seems. So it is continuously getting buffeted on my ears. Uh, if it is possible, please include this uh, hurt. Excuse me, sir. 
Do you unmute yourself? Sir, will you please unmute yourself? Okay. Now yeah. I have unmuted myself. Okay, wonderful. Somebody muted me. I don't know because I didn't mute myself. Normally, I don't mute myself no, because I am a teacher to my backbone, or you can call me a teacher to my monkey bone also. Uh, I don't, I don't cease till a bell is sounded. Right? Okay, so somebody muted me. Okay, I can see yeah. sources of William Shakespeare. If you look at the fact that William Shakespeare was not a fully qualified person. Uh, it is said that he was not able to complete his primary education also, but uh, you can see he depended upon the sources that he came across. Holy Shed's Chronicles, you know, first source of William Shakespeare, and Plutarch's Lives. These happen to be the two very important sources that William Shakespeare derived most of the theme and subjects for his plays that he eventually wrote down. And you can see a lot of uh, genius that we have here. Now you can see William Shakespeare had incomparable, you know, unparalleled, unique imagination. Now you can see there cannot be a writer without imagination. Imagination happens to be a faculty of mind. It's a power of mind, my dear friends. And William Shakespeare had it a lot. And uh, that is the reason why you can see he was able to derive stories from Orin Shed's Chronicles, uh, which were written in English language only, uh, which dealt with different stories uh, of the English and Scottish and uh, Irish uh, personalities for that matter. And he depended upon Plutarch's lives. Oh, and this book was translated by Sir Thomas North in the year 1579. So you can see how William Shakespeare was exposed to these two very important sources. Apart from that, it is said that William Shakespeare, as a child, as a school going boy, must have watched the initial versions of English drama, you know, morality plays, miracle plays, for that matter. You can see he might have seen some of the plays that were staged in Stratford upon Avon during his pupilage during his uh, childhood for that matter. You can see these were the sources that William Shakespeare had to depend upon. Otherwise, you know, uh, he did not have much of the knowledge of uh, European languages for that matter, my dear friends. You can see, on the other hand, if you compare William Shakespeare with his contemporaries, my dear friends, as far as academic, you call it elevation is concerned or qualifications are concerned, all his contemporary the writers for that matter were well qualified, right? But William Shakespeare, you know, used whatever sources he could compile, he could cull, and he could interpret as well. This was very important for him. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, all these sources for that matter compiled together, culled together, got magnified, got intensified by his genius by his inherent genius, inborn genius for that matter, you can see. So he had incomparable imaginative powers for that matter. So the stories that he took from uh, Chronicles and for that matter, lives, you know, were twice told stories. There, there was nothing new in those stories for that matter. But you can see, look at William Shakespeare's genius. He was able to convert those old stories, twice told stories into scintillating, brilliant plays for that matter, uh, which are immortal till date, my dear friends. You can see 400 and, uh, you know, five years have passed by since William Shakespeare, you know, breathed his last or kicked the bucket. Some people say joined the majority as well, but he's still popular, my dear friends. You know? I will... Uh, go to a slide where I'm going to read a poem by Matthew Arnold, dedicated to William Shakespeare. We'll see that afterwards. You can see how William Shakespeare exploited all the intellectual sources that he had uh, at his disposal. He had observations under his command and he had got a lot of experiences as well. So you can see William Shakespeare getting molded into a writer, a man who had come from a village. You know, in the beginning, he was only a villager, right? And he went on to become a writer by virtue of 
whatever sources uh, he was able to exploit, my dear friends. Well, so you can see the uh, Shakespearean theater for that matter, you know, is a very funny proposal for that matter because you know we are living in a very different, uh, uh, you know, century altogether. We have got so much of technical, uh, uh, you call you call it advancement, right, and progress as well. But in those days, you know, it was quite difficult uh, uh, for any dramatic club or dramatic organization to enact a play, to put a play on the stage for that matter. So you can see there were adverse conditions, very unfavorable conditions altogether. But in spite of all those conditions for that matter, William Shakespeare, you know, wrote down the plays and uh, many of his plays were enacted as well. And, uh, you know, they were instant success too. Now you can see, because of the adverse conditions, you know, William Shakespeare was able to attribute a comprehensive quality to his plays. You know? you know, I always tell my students that drama happens to be a very different type of literature. As a genre, drama is different from poetry or fiction because drama happens to be a composite art. You know, as it has been said by a critic, you know, composite, composite. You know, it is almost like a complex, my dear friends. It's a complex. You know, when a writer writes a play, you know, his job is done. You know? He says that my job is over. Now there has to be a producer who has to produce the play. And the producer, you know, has to hire a director. And there are a number of other constituents in the play, actors and musicians. And, uh, you know, the list is incomplete. My dear friends. You can see how drama happens to be a composite art. And William Shakespeare, when he saw that his times were entirely adverse, unfavorable, you know, he tried to make his plays comprehensive. So you can see, if you look at uh, some of the funny facts of Shakespearean theater, right, Shakespearean drama, you'll be surprised to know uh, some of these facts. Okay. You can see, I will show you the pictures, the images of uh, uh, the theater. Uh, during the times of William Shakespeare, my dear, as you can see, it looked like this. And, uh, you know, there were no curtains. Can you imagine a play getting enacted on the stage without a curtain? Just imagine the fun. You know, there were no lights for that matter. Lamps would be ignited. And in the illumination of the lamps, or sometimes, you know, during daytime itself, you know, the plays would be enacted so that there would be light, you know, uh, in the theater. So there were no curtains as far as uh, Shakespearean uh, theater was concerned. Open entries and exits. As there was no curtain, you know, the entries of the actors, for that matter, the characters uh, on the stage and their exits uh, would be very funny because uh, people would see them, you know, entering onto the stage, right? And exiting the stage as well. Now, one very horrible drawback that William Shakespeare suffered from was lack of actresses, there were no female actors. Ladies were not allowed to act on the stage. You look at Indian situation, and if you see Marathi drama, if you go back in the 19th century, you know, we have a very wonderful actor, you know, whose name is, do you know the name of that actor? You know, let us have an interactive session. He's a very famous Marathi actor who played the roles of ladies in Marathi melodious plays melodramatic plays for that matter, you can see he was no other than, yes, Balagandharva, my dear friends. So you can see during those times, you know, ladies were not allowed, women were not allowed to act on the stage. Therefore, the dramatist had this restriction. You know? A writer like William Shakespeare, you know, was not able to include as many female characters in his plays as he wanted for the sole reason that ladies were not allowed to act in the stage. So, the number of lady characters automatically got crunched and compressed. So, you can see minimum lady characters, you know, getting into play in the drama of William Shakespeare. So, no female characters. Farm characters and clowns would be included. So, you can see William Shakespeare was actually a philosopher of the first world. Why I call William Shakespeare to be a philosopher? Because he knew that life is full of ups and downs. Life is not all happiness, as it is not all sorrow. Life is a mixed bag. 
It's almost like a roller coaster that goes up now and suddenly goes down in a minute. Right? So William Shakespeare, you know, when you, if you look at uh, the writing career, especially the dramatic career uh, of William Shakespeare, you will see that he wrote different varieties of uh, play. We'll come to that afterwards. And uh, he began his career with uh, history plays. Then he uh, started to write uh, comedies. And suddenly, when different horrible developments took place in the life of William Shakespeare, his estranged relation to his wife, or the early death of his only son, Hamlet, what was the son of Hamlet, uh, William Shakespeare called Hamlet, died at only 11, my dear friends. No? So he was of a tender age. And this <clears throat> made William Shakespeare realize the fact of life that life is not all happiness, as it is not all you call it sorrow. Therefore, you can see after having written history plays and comedies and tragedies, you know, <clears throat> William Shakespeare found out, you know, he invented rather a very wonderful variety of drama. It's a type of drama called tragic comedy. Half tragedy and half comedy. This is almost like a life of man, which is a combination of happiness and sorrow, my dear friends. So you can see William Shakespeare was molded by the adversities as he was molded by his experiences, his observations for that matter. So you can see comic actors and clowns and costumes, you know, a million dollar question, you know, because most of the plays uh, written by William Shakespeare, you know, had royal characters. Now the costumes play a key role in dramatic enactment, my dear friends. You know? So the discarded clothes, you know, of the rich people, royal, uh, people for that matter would be used by these actors. You know, the throne away, discarded clothes uh, would be used as costumes. You know, for all these royal characters, legal characters for that matter, singing and dancing, a lot of singing and dancing for that matter. Because you know, uh, there would be a number of technical hurdles that uh, the dramatic presentation would uh, come across. Uh, therefore, a number of uh, episodes, you know, uh, got included, especially. William Shakespeare includes comic scenes in the very heart of a tragic drama, my dear friends. You know? I can see the composition of the audiences you know, used to compel the writers to cater to the needs and demands of all types of people you know, going to see the play. You know, there will be rich people, there will be middle class people, there will be poor people as well sitting in the pit, you can see the pit over here, you know, here. And uh, they would be sitting over here. So a talented and a shrewd writer like William Shakespeare, that's a different uh, technical uh, matter altogether, but he wanted to cater to the people sitting in the pit. You know, they would enjoy fun, you know, they would enjoy, yes, uh, hilarious moments, you know. Uh, in the plays. Therefore, in the tragic plays also, William Shakespeare had to include uh, comic uh, scenes for that matter, comic characters as well. Now you can see, in those days, you know, uh, there were uh, hardly any uh, media, you know, for advertising a particular play that was going to be enacted in theater. So instead of going for the billboards and ads and whatnot, you know, there used to be fluttered flags of different color. If the white flag fluttered on the top of the theater, it meant that on that particular occasion, a comedy was going to be enacted. If a black flag was uh, fluttered, it indicated that it was going to be a tragedy that would be presented. And red color you know, represented uh, the historical plea for that. But you can see there was hardly any uh, settings, you know, uh, because you know, it was quite difficult for uh, uh, the dramatic clubs to go for these types of uh, uh, settings, lavish sets for that matter on the stage. Uh, and you can see the different sections of uh, the Shakespearean theatre. No, this is for uh, the layman. I know that there are so many specialists uh, uh, listening to my speech and watching my presentation. This is not meant for uh, uh, the dignitaries over here. I'm catering all these uh, data. Those who don't know much about Shakespearean uh, theatre or Shakespearean uh, theatre conditions for that matter. 
you can see food and drinks were allowed and uh, you know major for that matter you can see uh, there are certain achievements that uh, i would like to throw light on and that's a human you know uh, william shakespeare's first play happened to be henry which was written for that matter in the year 1593 right and uh, his first comedy was the comedy of errors do you know for the comedy of errors has been filmed in english for that matter but it has been as adapted for a hindi movie can you tell me the name of the movie which is based on the comedy of errors you know let us try to make this session interactive because normally i make uh, my presentations interactive do you know any knowledge about it the comedy of errors as got as adapted into a hindi movie comedy of errors Okay, I will let you the name of the total Kangu, you know, in which Sanjeev Kumar uh, had a double role, to right? So the comedy of uh, errors, the first comedy written by William Shakespeare, the first tragedy by William Shakespeare was Titus Andronicus, which was published, sorry, which was written in the year fifteen hundred ninety-four, which was to be published uh, uh, in the year sixteen hundred twenty-three in the first volume. Uh, the Merchant of Venice happens to be the first tragic comedy. It is also called the Problem Play uh, by many critics. Uh, it was in the year sixteen hundred five. Now, if you look at uh, the other contributions by William Shakespeare, you know, uh, in a very different uh, you call it perspective altogether. If you see a play like The Tempest, which was written in sixteen hundred ten, it deals with uh, a very prophetic uh, you call it quality of william shakespeare i say prophetic quality because you know writers are almost like prophets uh, they see future in the present right and you can see how the relationship between prospero and caliban for that matter in this play called the tempest uh, throws light on the future process called colonization and we know that william shakespeare you know partly lived during queen elizabeth the first reign and we know queen queen elizabeth you no know, reign the first for that matter uh, queen elizabeth you know, happened to be a very memorable uh, you call it section in the history of britain my dear and uh, you can see a number of conquests were realized during this uh, period of queen elizabeth the first and the process of colonization was about to get underway under the name of trading and business for that matter people from england went to different newly discovered nation including the indian subcontinent so you can see the colonization for that matter uh, was actually uh, you know in the pipeline as uh, you can say it was going to take place uh, afterwards but william shakespeare you know, included this very wonderful uh, call it uh, prophetic indication in his play called the tempest If you look at Romeo and Juliet, you know, it is one of the most celebrated uh, love stories. Uh, Consider world literature. It is almost like a precedence that William Shakespeare has set uh, for the succeeding love stories, you know, ending in a very tragic manner. And then we see Hamlet. Hamlet is uh, a separate issue for that matter. It can be a topic for a separate presentation, my dear professor. And we see Hamlet, you know. It's not simply a tragedy. It's actually uh, an existential uh, play, my dear. It's an existential philosophy, and that is the reason why, you know, in spite of forgetting to know that Hamlet's father was murdered by his uncle, he did not take self-action right away. He waited, he thought, he contemplated because he happened to be a highly educated person and a very sensitive man, and he was not able to resolve himself. Whether he should uh, yes, take revenge, kill his uncle who had murdered his father mercilessly, or be quiet, and that is the reason why you know, he uttered you know a very wonderful uh, you call it uh, interaction with him sir. Of course, it's a story of me to be or not to be. That is the question. We'll see that afterwards. Okay. King Lear, yeah. I mean, if you can see, a very wonderfully uh, uh, wrought by William Shakespeare. Uh, how a father, an aging father, believed in a daughter or a set of daughters for that matter, two daughters for that matter, and got 
uh, deceit what illusion of father it's a family feud that we see in king lear and macbeth for that matter you know displays uh, the violence you know, reached by our politics so in the present context you know, we can relate all these uh, issues that were envisaged by William Shakespeare almost 400 years ago. I can see uh, the topic of uh, uh, today's uh, tonight's presentation for that matter is yeah. uh, William Shakespeare's contribution to English. You can see some of the words. I'm not going to read all the words for that matter. You can see them. These are some of the words that William Shakespeare currency to. It does not mean that William Shakespeare created these words, right? William Shakespeare established these words, you know, into, uh, you know, his uh, dramatic compositions in such a manner that these words got currency, these words got, you know, a trend of being used uh, in day-to-day uh, -day interactions, in day-to-day -day transactions, right? General people. So you can see these are the words that William Shakespeare gave currency to. Long list of words is there. I'm not go for all the words because I have got uh, a few other important issues to dwell upon. So these are the words that uh, William Shakespeare is supposed to have uh, uh, given currency uh, to. Now you can see there have been a uh, number of idioms. Now you can see English language, for that matter, uh, is not a pure term. English is not a pure language, right? English is supposed to be a part. It's a mixture. If you look at the original words in English, which have, you know, descended from the West Germanic language, the mother of English, that language, language, West Germanic language, you can see hardly 20, 25 or 30 percent words coming from this. The mother tongue of, you can say, uh, English, the mother of uh, English, for that matter. And the remaining words you know, have been derived from a number of European languages. You know? so if you look at the latest versions of uh, good dictionaries, uh, like uh, you know, Oxford dictionaries and Cambridge dictionaries and Random House dictionaries, you can see a separate supplement given at the end of uh, the dictionary, you know, uh, which carries a list of the Hindi words you know, accepted by English. And that is the reason why English is going to be uh, an immortal tongue because it's a very flexible language. Uh, some people say that English becomes to be a sponge language. It's almost like a sponge. It absorbs words from other languages. And it is said, you know, in the world of uh, languages that a language that changes survives. And a language that doesn't change dies a picture of death. And we know that English is a changing language. English happens to be a dynamic language, a very flexible language. So you can see uh, words getting currency uh, by virtue of William Shakespeare's uh, thematic compositions and poetic compositions for that matter. And uh, William Shakespeare has given a number of idioms. No? Now, idioms play a very important role uh, in the composition of a language. Every language has but a set of idioms uh, which are supposed to be culture specific. The idioms are originated in the culture in which the language gets evolved. You know, language is a matter of evolution rather than evolution. Right? So language keeps evolving. If you look at William Shakespeare's plays, and if you look at William Shakespeare's English, which can be a different uh, topic for uh, presentation, my dear friends, we wrote in medieval English for that matter. You can see we have these temporal dialects of English. So, if you want to appreciate William Shakespeare's play, you now most of the teachers, you know, this is the trade secret. I know that uh, I'm disclosing the trade secret. Uh, William Shakespeare is taught via paraphrase, by virtue of paraphrase, by means of paraphrase. And uh, you know what paraphrase is all about. It is simplified version of difficult discourse as text for that matter. You can see William Shakespeare has given rise to a number of idioms, and some of these idioms have become very important. I'm not going to deal with all the idioms that William Shakespeare you know, has uh, given currency to, but only a few for uh, uh, you, uh, honorable audiences. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. You no, know, these are the idioms that uh, are included in one of the greatest 
tragedies by William Shakespeare called Macbeth. And you can see how fair is foul and foul is fair. And idiom for that matter is to be taken for its implied meaning. It is not the literal meaning that we have to take. So if you look at the of idioms that uh, William Shakespeare has, uh, you know, interspersed his uh, uh, dramatic and uh, poetic compositions for that matter, you know, it's really a very wonderful uh, read for that matter. Primrose path to the everlasting bonfire, life's fitful fever, hurly burly or full of uh, sound and fury, be all and end all. It's Greek to me for that matter. You can say this is a very wonderful uh, idiom that has been uh, given currency by William Shakespeare in his play called Julius Caesar. All that glitters is not gold. Uh, he's known by every Tom, Dick or Harry for that matter because these are the idioms that we keep learning by heart uh, in our day-to-day -day, uh, interactions for that matter. To be or not to be, that is the question. Green-eyed monster, you know, uttered by a very wonderful character, a very wonderful composition of William Shakespeare called Iago, you know, from Othello, green-eyed monster. And uh, all is well that ends well. This is what we normally say at the end of a flop show, but we say all is well that ends well. So the corona pandemic uh, is on, you know, things are happening around. You know, it's a very dismal picture, of a very chill picture, but I should be grateful to In, uh, watching all these nights, uh, horrible uh, you know, images on uh, the news channels, my dear friends. But uh, Mr. Vanga you know, has saved me at least one night uh, and given me an opportunity uh, of doing something different right? because the times are very critical and uh, full of uh, morbidity, as you said. So you can see the idioms uh, given rise to by William Shakespeare. Life is a tale told by an idiot. By Macbeth, you know, uh, I forgot to include this uh, idiom on the earlier slide. And uh, then you can see Shakespeare is known for a number of stories and monologues. Soliloquy in Marathi is called Swagat. And monologue is also a kind of Swagat. But Soliloquy is uttered by a character when the character is all alone on the screen. And monologue for that matter is uttered by a character when there is a character around him or a couple of characters around him. But it is believed that the character who is near the main character, you know, is not paying any attention to the character who is uttering the monologue. So someone has rightly defined monologue or sorry, lucky for that matter, uh, as dialogue between one man. So soliloquy is almost like monologue is almost like a dialogue between one man. You know, when you talk to yourself, you know, and you can see how a soliloquy uh, is almost like a weapon, you know, double-edged weapon. It is not only a dramatic device that uh, uh, a dramatist can make use of, you know, but it's almost an opportunity that is given you know, uh, for the viewers and the readers to enter into the consciousness of a character. Because, you know, this is almost like entering the stream of consciousness, you know, of uh, the character. The mind of the character is laid bare, you know, to the readers and the readers. And they can have a snack of what we want, you know, at the back of uh, the mind of a given character. So you can see a very acute, a very famous uh, and memorable, sorry, of people in terms here, to be or not to be. That is the question. Whether you in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of the outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing and them. You can see this is a soliloquy which got a lot of attraction all over the world. And a Marathi dramatist. Do you know the name of the Marathi dramatist? Yes, Gnan Peach Awadi, a very celebrated Marathi dramatist. Uh, V.V. Shirwadkar, my dear friends. You know, sought inspiration. You can see what was the dream of uh, V.V. Shirwadkar. V.V. Shirwadkar was an exhaust fan of William Shakespeare. <laughs> Let me tell you, he was not a simple admirer for that matter. You know, he went all the way to England, visited the house of William Shakespeare. You know, saw the beautiful Avon River, saw the globe, the theater. You know, which was once 
full of hustle and bustle, my dear friends, full of dramatic activities, you know. And V.V. Shirvarkar was very happy. He was at the climax of his happiness, pinnacle of his happiness, when he saw, you know, William Shakespeare's birthplace. Because, you know, Shirvarkar was motivated by William Shakespeare, just as countless number of uh, writers in this world have been motivated by William Shakespeare. You know? And uh, the Marathi parallel for this to be or not to be, you know, it's so very beautifully narrated by a number of Marathi actors, right from Dr. Shriram Lagu up to Nana Pathekar, my dear friend. So you can see how William Shakespeare's soliloquies, you know, if you collect only soliloquies and monologues from William Shakespeare and extricate all the other data, William Shakespeare would be as famous as he was with all those data in his dramatic compositions, my dear friends. So you look at the passages, you, know, you look at the poetic passages in William Shakespeare's plays, you know, and uh, you know, they are called cameo passages. You know? Well, cameo uh, discourses for that matter by William Shakespeare. But look at other very wonderful, uh, this is one of my favorite uh, soliloquies by William Shakespeare, which comes in the play called Othello. This is, you know, if William Shakespeare had written only four tragedies, and if he had not written any other single word in his life, you know, he would have become as famous, you know, a dramatist as he eventually became after having written all those other plays and poetic compositions, my dear friends. You know? First is Hamlet, second is Othello, third is King Lear, and the last is Macbeth. We'll come to this particular thing at the end of my presentation. Okay, put out the light and then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore. Should I repent me, but once put out thy light, thou cunningest, pattern of excelling nature. I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light relume. And see the words used by William Shakespeare. There is a reference to Prometheus, one of the titans, you know, he's supposed to have brought light on this planet called the earth. There are so many myths uh, in Christianity, my dear friend, just as there are so many myths and legends uh, in Indian, I would call it uh, Puranas and Shastras for that matter. You can see Prometheus was actually a titan you know, who is believed to have stolen light from the heavens. You know, he stole light, which was, uh, you know, actually a property of the head of the gods and goddesses called Jesus and brought it onto the planet called the earth. So you can see very wonderful use of all these images and symbols by William Shakespeare. And uh, we come to a monologue. Once again, it has been taken from Hamlet. And you can see, uh, this is a very paradoxical uh, piece of interaction between Hamlet and a couple of characters, uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstone, present along with Hamlet in this particular play called Hamlet. And you can see, this is celebration. You know, This is language uh, at its climax. This is supposed to be sublimity in creation, right? My friends, Longinus talks about sublime in literature, sublimity, you know, elevation, exaltation for that matter. So what a piece of work is a man, how noble in reason, how infinite in faculties, in form and moving, how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals, and yet, what is this quintessence of dust? Man lights not him, nor woman neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. Just imagine Hamlet, what was crossing his mind. He understood, he realized oh, the futility of life. What's life? What's human life for that time? It's only a length of time, it's only a span that begins at the birth of man and ends. At the death of man, if you look at uh, the situation around how people are getting, you know, dead and gone because of a virus, a tiny virus that cannot be seen even under the microscope, all your friends, you know? it's killing human beings. So, what is life? If you look at Hamlet, you know, and if you look at the utterances of Hamlet, you know, 
you can relate the condition, the psychological condition of Hamlet to the present scenario, the present situation, my dear friends. Right? It's not different. So you can see what is man then? You know, a beautiful definition of man. He says, in the beginning, you know, there are so many celebrating lines dedicated to definition of man. But you can see, what is this quintessence of dust? Quintessence, essence of dust. So what is man? Essence of dust. You see realization here. No? Hamlet at the end of the play, you know, takes an action. That's a different matter. But you can see how he postponed action, delayed action. This is called irresolution on the part of Hamlet. Irresolution, he was not able to take a decision. Indecision, right? Okay. And then you can see, this is my, you can see cunningness and shrewdness. I have included a few passages that I have uh, done into Marathi. Huh? There's a very famous poem by William Shakespeare. This is not a separate poem. This is actually a piece of dialogue in a play called As You Like It. It is a third by Jax, one of the characters in the play. And uh, let me have a mouthful of water. And what is this dialogue, my dear friends? All the words are staged. Cameo passage in As You Like It. And all the men and women, merely players, they have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. And then the winning, winning I think, pardon, schoolboy with his session and shining morning face, creeping like snail, unwilling to school. I have translated this passage from one of Shakespeare's plays into Marathi. And uh, as uh, Mr. Banga insisted me upon going for a uh, few Marathi utterances in Marathi, Sampurna Jag ek Ranga Bhumi Ahi, and Sarva Purushani Stri, Keval Kalakara Ahi, Apaple Pravesh, Ani Dirgaman Tharle Leasta, Ek Vikti Apla Ayushat, Anek Bhumika Vatavite, Janusat Ankasta Tese, Asto Arabak Survatila, Suinicha, Kadever, Ultia Karit, Taho Fudnara. Nantar Shalkari Mulga, Kanat, Daptarace Uze Vanara, Sakaracha Uzad Lelia, Cheheranishi, Mandagatine, Ani Cherets, Shalit Zanara, and then the lover, sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad, made to his mistress's eyebrow, then a soldier, full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation, even in the cannon's mouth. And my Marathi version, Ani Mag Prem Veer, Bhatti Gat Dhumas Nara, Ghevan Othan Var Arzavi Gandhi, Priyasi Chara Naini Vahanara, Tadan Antar Ek Sainik Prachanda Matwa Kankshi, Ani Chipal, sorry, Chapal Chitya Sarkha, Pratishtha Zapanara, An Atyadhik Akramak, Ani Samor Sakshat Maran Uha Astana, Kshana Bhangur, Astitva Zopas Nara, and then the Justice. In fair round daily, with good cape and lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise saws in modern instances. And so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouch on side. Tanantar Nayadhish. Aple gol gargarit port kaseva se sambarat, but nazaret zarab vasavidya kesh bushe sahar. Vidvat Prachur, Pragat, Sambhashan, Chakturya Rakhun, Bhumika Vyavasthit Vata, Tasa Vata Pa, Apla Shishri Deh Tumani Tapetun, Nakavar Chadishi, and Shizari Chanchi Balagat. And we are coming to the last section of this very beautiful composition by William Shakespeare. His youthful hose, well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk chan, and his gay man voice. Turning again toward childish treble, pipes and whistles they sound. The last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. Bhut kala til josh dakunas ani samsara til pipe it karnas samarth, purvashravitsa mardana kharj osrum 
पुन्हा बालकासम चिरकणारा असा गणिक किरकिरणारा आणि मग सर ते शेवटी ह्या देदीप्यमान सनसनाट इतिहासाचा अखेर म्हणजे दुसरे बालपण जडू किंबहुना फक्त विस्मरण विना दंत पंक्ती विना दृष्टी विना रसना विना सर्व काही अँड यू कॅन सी दिस इज वॉट विलियम शेक्सपियर नो हॅज व्हेरी ब्युटिफुली इन्क्लुडेड all the seven stages in life of man what is life of man if you want a definition let me definition you can look at this passage yeah. and you can see all the seven stages in life of man. and uh, i will not go for the poem because uh, have i got time left in my presentation sir uh, 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 no we want to go into minutes we can wind up sir yes it's okay five to ten minutes ten minutes allowed okay Okay thank you. Yeah we can okay sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you sir. Okay. Yeah yeah. Okay. okay okay. Thank you. So can see Matthew Arnold has written a very wonderful sonnet dedicated to a William Shakespeare. And uh, I will not go through all the sonnet for that matter. I will simply tell you the gist of this uh, very beautiful composition by Matthew Arnold. Matthew Arnold was a 19th century poet, a celebrated English poet. And he too himself was a genius. I was a genius saluting the genius of uh, yes, yesteryears. And this composition compares William Shakespeare with other writers. At the very outset, you can see the word others abide our question. And the, the lines come one after another, celebrating different dimensions of William Shakespeare, different qualities of William Shakespeare. And you can see how other writers, you know, mean something via their literary compositions. But William Shakespeare you know, allows the readers to enter into yes, the core of his uh, literary compositions and gives them the freedom you know, to interpret him. You know. And Matthew Arnold has said that William Shakespeare you know, is looking at the world from his grave with a smile across his face. Because William Shakespeare knows that there have been so many darker chambers in his literary compositions, which are not illuminated by any from the public. So many research works have been done, so many entries have been done, so many studies for that matter have been done on William Shakespeare. People run shops in the name of William Shakespeare. People have earned money by virtue of exploiting the genius of William Shakespeare. Okay. Well, I would like to recite a poem by Vinda Karandikar. It will not take more than two minutes. I will go through the poem quickly. Vinda Karandikar, yes, yes. a Marathi poet, writing down a poem on the life of William Shakespeare and comparing William Shakespeare with Sant Tukaram or Saint Tukaram. Beautiful comparison, beautiful collaboration between the two genius of mine. One from England and the other one from India. तुकोबांच्या भेटी शेक्सपियर आला तो झाला सोहळा दुकानात आय कॅन सी दोकेशन ऑफ दिस मीटिंग इंटरॅक्शन बिटवीन टू ग्रेट ग्रँड पर्सनॅलिटीज जाहली दोघांची उरावरी भेट उरातले थेट उरामध्ये तुका म्हणे वर्ल्ड फ्युज बाय करायचं ओनली अ मॅन टेक प्रिवेस अथॉरिटी कॅन यूज दीज वर्ल्ड एनी थॉम डी फॉर कॅन नॉट डू विल्या तुझे कर्म थोर अवघाती संसार उभा केला शेक्सपियर म्हणे एक ते राहिले तुका जे पाहिले बाबा ते बरे केले त्याने कडे गेले संसार आले संसार आला बिकॉज नो हिज डेडिकेशन टू वर्स विठ्ठल ही हॅड कॉरन्स बॅक होम ही हॅड टू कॉर्न विथ इज वाईफ तुका म्हणे गड्या वृथा शब्द पीठ प्रत्येकाची वाट वेगळ आली वेगळीये वाटे वेगळीये काटे काट्या संगे भेटी पुन्हा तोच ऐक ऐक वाजे घंटा ही मंदिरी कजा गिण घरी वाट पाही बेटर ऑफ वॉज बेटिंग बॅक होम दोघे निघून यात गेले दोन दिशा यु सी दॅक्स ऑफ द पोयम दिस इज कॉल्ड दोघे निघून या गेले दोन दिशा 
प्रवृत्ति का आकांक्षा आगे ना आई हैव गुज बम समय बॉडी माइड ऑफ दिस वंडरफुल कंपोजिशन बाय जिंदा एंड आई एम गोइंग टू फिनिश माय प्रेजेंटेशन इन अ कपल ऑफ मिनट्स ओनली आ दिस इज द पोएम दैट आई हैव रिटन ऑन द लाइफ ऑफ विलियम शेक्सपियर आई विल क्विकली गो थ्रू द पोएम एंड देन कम टू माय कंक्लूजन एंड यू कैन सी आई रोट दिस पोएम इन द ईयर 2016 observed it is not celebrated that anniversary is observed the for 400th death anniversary of william shakespeare right it gives us goosebumps to even think that a genius like you ever existed a man with versatile creativity that illuminated the mind of man well before the so called dissectors of mind you delved deep into the warp and the weft of our psyche and there erupted unforgettable plots immortal people elevated action and sublime diction and uh, thousands of successors lakhs of imitations millions of degrees and billions of articles mushrooming all over the stage of this globe during these four centuries there is not a single writer who can go without you not a single language that does not owe to you a vital part of its making not a single culture which does not take the gems of uh, your mind for its glory history is incomplete without your majestic incorporation and thou sorry you look at the world the smug smile from your sanctified mausoleum the grave of william shakespeare and throw down on us an oblique glance that sees how we his followers fabricated oxford theory and cambridge theory a number of notorious you know research works were done to blame william shakespeare edit william shakespeare doubting the unbelievable creative power fertile intellect prophetic vision overwhelming intuition and we the self styled critics of your celestial expression behaved like the persona of your make we doubted like othello hurt like macbeth regal like hamlet behaved like lear and betrayed like brutus despite all our outrageous creeds words and deeds you have been with us with kitsch and negative capability we have realized like coleridge that we have been your puppets and now we nurture a staunch belief that you will shakespeare of stratford upon avon you are omnipresent omniscient and omnipotent you are god even better than god and one minute i will take if you want to have self realization just as lord buddha you know before he became buddha he was not a lord by birth he was in the state of an empire he went to gaya sat under the bodhisattva tree held penances and he became lord buddha right he carried glory around him vivekananda went to cape comorin held penances there did meditations there and he had his self realization People like you and me can afford to go long distances. We can sit back at our own houses, especially in the wake of Corona pandemic. Read books, read William Shakespeare. We will come to know who you are. You know, aren't you haunted by this question? Who am I? I am not talking about a movie by Jackie Chan. I am talking about a very important question that every human being must, you know, think about on one fine Sunday morning. You know, you read William Shakespeare. You know. if you are not able to take a quick decision and spoil your life you are a hamlet if you doubt you are near and dear dear ones and bring on your tragic death you are a thing if you have a very high ambition and you can yes play foul with others because of your ambition you are like macbeth and if you believe in anybody around you in a very foolish manner and get deluded by your your own near and dear ones you are kingly my dear friends don't go away don't go to the jungles and forests there is nothing left uh, in the jungles and forests keep home stay home right stay safe uh, read william shakespeare and have your self realization uh, with this i would like to thank uh, the rotary club of solapur midc and sunday sarathi english speakers club of solapur for having given me a very wonderful opportunity uh, of you know dealing with a very very you call it for tile topic called william shakespeare 
and English language as well. I don't know whether I have been able to do justice to uh, my uh, given topic or not, but uh, I'm really grateful to all uh, the people who have heard me and who have shown uh, patience, uh, you know, throughout my presentation. Thank you and good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Very nice. Wonderful. We should have a big round of applause for Anirudh Manojoshi, sir. Yeah, just uh, captivated us for one and a half hours duration with a wonderful knowledge and his overall experience about uh, William Shakespeare and English language. Excellent, sir. Uh, we were just uh, captivated. Just uh, no words for. And uh, almost 100 members, 100 participants were present over here today. Afterwards, limit level the uh, decrease, but overall, those who attended enjoyed your speech wonderfully. Huh? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, to some of the session, I would like to invite Nagesh Karadi, sir, to propose a word of thanks. Will you please, Mr. Nagesh Karadi, sir? Nagesh, Nagesh, sir. I think he might have left. Okay, no problem, sir. Uh, Lekra, is he, is he there? So after many, many years, we once again experienced the literature classes, a literature classroom. I was told to watch the college, but it was that. And uh, Chavan sir was the uh, HOD in those days. Yes, yes, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. He was there, Kamali sir was there, I was a student yes. over there. And uh, we just recall all the things. And Professor Kausai, yeah, wonderful English teacher in those days. Yes. He yes. was also teaching Baldwin, Macbeth, Othello, and U.S. Caesar on this the wonderful drama. So yeah, right. I guess I felt, I think as if I was a student, no? almost 25 years back. Sitting in the watching college classroom in the third floor. Okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the second huh? So we'll be quite okay. uh, <clears throat> grateful to you, sir. You just accepted our invitation and uh, you just uh, decided to be over there. It was just one 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 week back. Last Friday we decided, and this week yes. you delivered wonderful speech. Excellent, mind blowing. You can say. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. You can say the words. So thank you so much, sir. And okay. those who present over here, the galaxy of excellence uh, personalities over here, Dhoti sir, Sazamudya sir, Reddy sir, Dr. Priyanka, or all the Rotary members and Sarthians, thank you so much for being with us here. here. And uh, through this way, for the last one week, Dhoti uh, sir, yes. uh, last Friday we started uh, this session, each and every day, 8.30 to 9.30. So we carried out such a communication skills session. And there was a huge response from the students, it don't be people to uh, Rotarians as well as housewives or the teachers, those who were interested in learning English communication. So we had a one week session and today is a conclusion session for that one. So it is a nice uh, inclination towards uh, learning some different languages, different words, especially given or gifted by William Shakespeare. So once again, sir, okay. sir thank you so much. And yes, all sir, the Rotarians and yes. thank you so much. All the English teachers, English enthusiasts, thank you so much for uh, being with us. I just requested you, all of you, for the last two, three days, and you all present over here. Thank you one second for them. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you and good night. Good night. Good night, all of you.